Good afternoon, Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma. That was an interesting opening there, Mikey. Yeah, I didn't even see uh, it. Yeah, I just saw it in the corner uh, of my eye. What that was, was new. What was it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Watch? That was like a swoosh away or something there. Yeah, I'm not sure where the globe went. Can, but, can you do a fancier yeah. one when we go to the live camera downtown can you, yeah, too? Yeah, wow. Can, you can we do it? like a kaleidoscope or something next time? Okay. Really, really throw the viewers for a loop there? Okay, we are waiting for Doug Ford, and today he's going to be on. Uh, Christine Allen's going to be there as mm -hmm. per normal. She's the uh, deputy premier. Uh, but Jeff Yark, who's the Minister of Environment, Conservation, and Parks, will be there along with Lisa McLeod, who is the Minister for Heritage, Sports, Tourism, and Culture Industries. So this announcement will probably be uh, a little bit more lighthearted than yesterday's tow truck right. organized crime announcement. Yeah, a little bit less murder, yeah, maybe a little one. bit more yeah, parks more opening, fun. maybe, yeah. hopefully, fingers so. crossed. I mean, my guess earlier yeah. today at the 8 o'clock uh, show, a special report, it's got to be something with sports. I know the oh, Sioux yeah. even getting ready, yeah. a little antsy to start opening their parks and their pump tracks and what whatnot. Yeah. Oh, Doug Ford is here. We Let's take it. Doug Ford will be back after him. Well, good afternoon. As we look back over the past few months at the heroic efforts of our frontline workers, at the hundreds of businesses who stepped up, at the thousands of volunteers who put up their hand to help. We should all feel very proud. I've never been more proud to be a Canadian than at this very moment in Ontario's history. And Canada Day gives us a chance to celebrate the extraordinary actions of these heroic people. Our neighbours, our friends, our fellow Canadians. The challenges we have faced together over the past few months have only made us stronger. We've been put to the test as a province and as a country, and we're able to rise to the occasion. Thanks to the collective efforts of the people of Ontario, the province is reopening and people are getting back to work. We delivered $17 billion in immediate relief for families, supports for businesses, and funding for health care. We've expanded testing and contact tracing hitting new daily record of over 30,000 tests in a day, with over 98% coming back negative. We're one of the leading provinces in clinical trials and research to find vaccines, treatments, and rapid testing methods for COVID-19. We have the best and the brightest minds right here in Ontario. We have the hardest working people you can find anywhere. We mobilized our manufacturing might to make the PPE and equipment we need to help our frontline workers fight COVID-19 because we don't have to rely on other countries anymore. We can make anything right here on Canadian soil, right here on Ontario. We have the best of the best. My friends, there are still great challenges ahead of us, but we live in the greatest province, in the greatest country in the entire world, and nothing is going to stop us. We will come back with vengeance, stronger and more prosperous than ever before. And to show our thanks to the people of Ontario and celebrate this national holiday in true Canadian style, we're giving everyone a chance to explore our great province. Ontario Parks will be offering free day use at all provincial parks across the province, from north to south, from east to west. And we're also allowing free fishing for the whole family starting this Saturday, July the 4th. Numerous attractions across Ontario have planned special virtual events or events with physical distancing measures to celebrate Ontario's culture and artistic excellence. And as we all take a well-deserved break tomorrow to celebrate this great country, I'd just like to remind everyone to stay safe. Wishing everyone a very happy and safe Canada Day. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario and God bless the greatest country in the world. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Minister York now. Thank you very much, uh, Premier. We have all spent a lot of time inside this spring as people across Ontario have done their part to help stop the spread. So as we celebrate Canada Day, we are offering free day use tomorrow to make it easier for families from across the province to enjoy the green spaces and other recreational activities that our Ontario parks have to offer. To help ensure a safe, enjoyable visit to our parks, we're continuing to take measures to prevent overcrowding, enhance cleaning of high-touch surfaces, and promote physical distancing. 
Capacity will be limited at some of our more popular parks, so I do encourage you to arrive early. You can visit OntarioParks.com or Ontario Parks social media channels to check the status of your local provincial park and what services are available. Ministry officers will also be present to provide information, assist with emergencies, and enforce provincial park rules and regulations. So when you're visiting our parks, be responsible. Keep following public health advice, including social, physical distancing, and keep at least two meters from others. And come prepared with hand sanitizer, extra water, soap, and other supplies. I'd also like to give thanks to my colleague, Minister Yakabuski. Families looking for another affordable and low-risk way to enjoy Ontario's world-class lakes and rivers can take advantage of an additional week of free family fishing. It's a great way to get out this month and support the province's tourism industry. For two weeks, July 4th to the 19th, Ontario residents of all ages can fish in Ontario without having to purchase a license or carry an outdoors cart. It's been a very long spring, but it's time to celebrate Canada Day and everything that makes our country great. Whether you're visiting a park, spending time with family and friends, or staying home tomorrow, happy Canada Day, everyone. I'll now pass it over to Minister McLeod. Thank you, Premier, and thank you, Minister Urich. The past few months have had a devastating impact on Ontario's heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. COVID-19 has tested us as Ontarians, but our creators, athletes, artists, and community builders continue to bring out the best in us. Over the past four months, and certainly over the past two weeks, as I've traveled the province, I've seen our $75 billion sectors overcome adversity to bring the power of music, art, and culture into our homes. This Canada Day will be different, but our government remains committed to fueling the spectacular double bottom line driven by our creative and cultural sectors. It's why we're proud to continue to invest more than $1.8 million in community festivals and events that celebrate our diverse Canadian culture so that we'll be able to come together again when it is safe to do so. In the meantime, I invite you to explore all that makes our province unique this Canada Day. Numerous Ontario attractions within my ministry have special social distancing experiences and events planned for July 1st, including the McMichael Gallery, which will be showcasing video highlights of their Canadian art collection. The Niagara Parks Commission, which will be hosting a virtual event that showcases the best of Niagara's artists, including Tim Hicks, Spencer Burton, and the Great Lake Swimmers. The St. Lawrence Parks Commission is pleased to welcome back guests beginning tomorrow to their Fort Henry and Upper Canada Village attractions. Science North will be holding a festivity unlike any other, featuring multicultural entertainment, science exhibits, and other fun activities for kids. And Destination Ontario has curated a music playlist of Ontario's amazing talent, including those featured at last night's Juno Awards. There is so much to be proud of and to celebrate this Canada Day at www.ontario.ca backslash Canada Day. Meanwhile, I'll continue to keep traveling across our great province to show everyone that we offer the world in one province. Happy Canada Day, Ontario. Okay, we'll go to the phone line for questions. First question. First question. Your first question comes from Jason Chapman with 640 Toronto. Please go ahead. Premier, thanks, and uh, thanks for the uh, Canada Day wishes. Yeah, thank you. you know, I'm asking this question because we're talking about all the entertainment stuff, and I've got kids crawling all over me, and I've had parents in my neighborhood ask me about this. Yeah. Lots of things are opening. Playground equipment in the province is still off limits. I'm wondering why and if there's a timeline to reopen playground equipment to kids. Lots of tape has come down, Premier, and there's confusion again. Is there a plan as part of phase two to reopen that equipment? I'll pass that over to Minister Elliott. Thank you. 
Well, we're certainly looking at what's safe for everyone, what's safe for children. Playground equipment has been uh, more difficult because there are uh, little people climbing on it. There are, it's very difficult to disinfect it on a regular basis, but it is something that we are considering for the next stage in our reopening as we move from stage two to stage three. There will be many other considerations of other things that will be brought in, but the opening of children's playgrounds is certainly one of the um, items that are under consideration for that. But no timeline right now. I have another follow-up, but no timeline at this point, by the end of the summer or by the time school starts? No timeline as yet. We're still waiting to see the results from the Stage 2 opening. We need about another week of data to understand if there's anything in particular that's causing outbreaks. Um, so far, as, uh, as far as Stage 2 is concerned, it, it's looking very good, but we still need another week's data to really inform the situation and then decisions will be made about the opening of stage three. Okay, the only other follow-up I have, and I'm sure it'll be asked again, is, is obviously uh, mayors from Peel and Toronto this morning okay. announced that uh, masks will likely, the uh, council vote still has to happen in Toronto, that masks will be mandatory indoors. The province bought on a request to make that mandatory across the province. Can you further explain why you didn't want to make it just a provincial mandate for the next several months? Well, I've always uh, said, I refer, let's start off with the golden rule. Um, if you're in uh, large groups, wear a mask, wear a face covering of, the, of some sort, and, uh, and practice social distancing. Um, so that's, that's the golden rule, but uh, each region uh, has the authority to make their own rules and a province this size, uh, I encourage it. And I encourage uh, and uh, compliment the, the regions that are doing it, be it Toronto and Peel. But Toronto and Peel is different than Kenora Rainy River. It's, uh, you know, apples and oranges. So each uh, public health uh, area will have the authority to, to put in uh, either two ways. Either they do it through Section 22 of the Health Act or they do it through the bylaw and go to council, which Toronto's done. Toronto's uh, going to council and they're voted on it. So I, I think it's good. I encourage them to do that. Next question. Your next question comes from Dave Bellicello with Windsor Star. Please go ahead. Hi, Dave. Hi, Mayor. How are you today? I'm doing well. Uh, my, question, uh, my question for you today is, last week you indicated uh, migrant workers in the Kingsville Lincoln area, they would be allowed to go back to work uh, if they tested positive but had no symptoms. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, the uh, medical officer of health in Windsor today, indicated he has uh, decided not to allow those workers uh, back into the workplace in there to self-isolate. Just wondering if you had any problems with that decision or, or any comment. No, that, that's a, a choice of Dr. Ahmed. Uh, he's been doing a good job, and, and if the, the cases, which we've seen on one farm, uh, 175 or 177 cases, uh, maybe uh, that's going to be his decision. In other, other situations, he might be a little more flexible, but uh, I understand where he's coming from. Follow up. Thank you. No, thanks. Thank you. Your next question. Your next question comes from David Naylor with TSN. Please go ahead. David. Uh, Premier, I, uh, uh, happy Canada Day in advance. Happy Canada Day. Um, the, um, the province has welcomed uh, the opportunity of, of having an NHL hub here and the opportunity for the Blue Jays to play regular season games here. What is its appetite to be considered as a potential hub for the Canadian Football League if it goes ahead and plays this year? And have there been any discussions in that regard with the league? Well, I'm going to hand this over to Minister McLeod. I, I uh, haven't talked to the CFL. Uh, I've talked to the uh, NHL. I've talked to Major League ba Baseball. But they're the only two that I've talked to, so I'll pass it over to Minister McLeod. Thank you very much, Premier. Um, having regular discussions with all of our professional sports uh, teams, as well as CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi, uh, we met over the last couple of weeks, as well as with the Red Blacks, Tie Cats, and uh, in continued conversations with MLSC with respect to uh, the Raptors, um, uh, the Leafs as a hub city, and of course uh, with the CFL. So uh, earlier today, I had the opportunity to meet with my federal counterpart, Stefan Gibault. 
uh, to talk about uh, Major League Baseball as well as uh, our ongoing discussions about the CFL. Um, we want to make sure that each one of these uh, organizations, if they do choose to play here, have uh, stringent and safe uh, health and safety protocols in place, uh, that those rigors uh, will be uh, um, approved by both the local uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health as well as our Provincial Chief Medical Officer of Health, I will say this. Um, we have, uh, we were one of the first jurisdictions in North America to open up for um, our high performance athletes. So our Canadian Olympians in Ontario have been training uh, for almost a month now and we continue to work uh, with the NBA uh, for the Raptors training facility as well as the Canadian Elite Basketball League. Um, so these conversations are ongoing uh, but again we will not put the health and safety of Ontarians at risk um, but we are looking at uh, 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 robust protocols that are in place uh, with each of the leagues. Um, I don't would, know if would a problem. hub would, is a hub is something that's come up in your conversations with the Canadian Football League for Ontario? Uh, absolutely, they have uh, they have discussed uh, possibly going uh, to Hamilton or the Burlington area, and uh, and I, I don't think any option is off the table. We're right now working with them, as you know, they have a substantial request uh, financially in with the federal government. Uh, and last week, uh, the uh, all the sport ministers across the province across the country um, who have CFL teams met uh, to see how we can best uh, support the the, uh, the CFL. Obviously. Ontario is very excited to host the Grey Cup next year, the 109th in 2021, and so we want to do everything we possibly can to make them viable, um, and uh, that includes uh, having a conversation with our federal counterparts about how to do that. Next question. Thank you very much, Minister and uh, Premier Ford. That's great. I've heard, I've heard nothing but positive things about the way Minister McLeod has handled uh, many files, but the sports file from amateur to professional sports. So. Minister, you're doing a great job, and everyone's telling me that as well. Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Premier. Um, I'm curious again about uh, Stage 3. So the data today has 20 out of 34 regions with zero new cases of COVID-19. And I know in the, particularly in the northern areas, uh, it's been fairly consistent that, that there have been zero cases. Why not open them up sooner by region? They must be screaming for it. Well, every, everyone's uh, quick to scream for it. You know, a lot of phone calls are coming through and man, I'm even getting lobbied by uh, Santa Claus right now. I, I really am. I, I'm not a word of exaggeration. And I favor one of my favorite spots when my kids were younger is, is Santa's Village. And, uh, you know, Santa Claus is getting restless up there, but he knows the safety of his kids are number one priority. But uh, what a great destination, one of the great destinations. Uh, again, I'd bring all my, my four girls. So uh, right from Santa to you name it from the, uh, you know, a dog catcher is, is on to me about opening up, but we have to do it safely and we will do it safely and we're going to uh, do it in steps as we did before. And uh, we just have to continue seeing the, the numbers go in the right direction, which they have. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to the Minister of Health. Uh, she's the commander in chief at the health table. So I'll, I'll pass this uh, over to the Minister of Health. Well, things have been going quite well in stage two, but we're only several weeks into it. We still need the data from about another week to really understand um, if there's cause for any concerns, anything that's causing outbreaks. We have to assess it on a daily basis to understand uh, where we are with it. But we are having discussions about going into the next phase, whether we do it across the province, whether we do it regionally. These are serious discussions that were happening. We have a, a committee dealing with that later on this afternoon. So we're having discussions about where this should happen, uh, of course, when, everybody wants to know that, and then what will be opening next. So uh, we hope to be able to move into the next stage as soon as possible, but as the Premier says, it's really up to uh, public health, it's to know what the numbers are, to make sure that we see the numbers going down. We had a bit of a spike uh, because of some testing in the Essex area, but we want to make sure that across the province that it's going to be safe for us to move into stage three, so we're taking it very cautiously because we want um, everyone in every part of the province to be uh, safe and healthy. Paula? Thank you. And my next question is for the Premier, and uh, I'm asking on behalf of my colleague Pam Seidel. 
Premier, Ontario's courts have held up a ruling that will see midwives receive a 20% retroactive boost in salary. And your government has contested this salary bump in the past. What is your reaction to the court's decision? And will the Ford government pursue further action when it comes to fighting the salary increase? Well, I always respect the courts, but uh, I'm going to pass this over to the Minister of Health again. Thank you. Well, first of all, we, we respect very much the incredible work that Ontario's midwives uh, perform, and we do respect the, uh, the, the decision of the court, of course. We uh, are going to review the decision in, in detail, but um, of course the, uh, the court's decision is uh, very important, and uh, we will be reviewing that and um, taking whatever action we need to take, if anything, in the future. Next question. Your next question comes from Randy Rath with CHCH TV. Please go ahead. Hi, Randy. Hi, Hi Premier. Um, last Friday, we saw a judge in a high profile case um, deliver his judgment. And under the Emergency Measures Act, he, he an Emergency Act, he, he um, opened it up so that it could be broadcast on live stream. The, the live stream got 20,000 viewers. Is that something that should be held over and expanded after the, the COVID situation is settled? It's interesting. I guess there's a lot of interest. 20,000 viewers. Wow. You know, we, uh, we have to talk to the Attorney General about that. But that, that's pretty good, 20,000. Man, people are interested. So if people are interested, maybe we look at it. Follow up. Okay. Um, also, yesterday you were talking about... Um, it's, uh, it's testing teams going into Niagara into the agriculture community to uh, test workers. Um, I'm wondering if you could give more detail on that and, and why it's being done, where it's being done, and are you worried that there could be a, a, an outbreak again in, in, in Niagara among uh, agricultural workers? Well, within uh, the agricultural industry, we've, we've seen what's happened down in Leamington and, and Kingsville and uh, another big area is Niagara so we just want to make sure it's better to be safe than sorry we want to make sure we go down there and we communicate with the uh, temporary workers make sure they're safe that's that's the number one priority make sure we communicate that they aren't going to be sent home they're going to be treated like any other uh, uh, resident of Ontario they have to have a safe workplace and for any reason they they can't work they're eligible for WSIB uh, they're also uh, eligible for any benefits through the federal or, or provincial government. And welcome back. Thank you very much uh, for that. We are actually now going to be able to actually go to our Ontario parks more. So that, thank you very much, Doug Ford and mm -hmm. everybody else who was there. That is fantastic news. And are we going to have good weather for those parks? Well, at least I'm, over the next few days. I may be no damn, but I will do my very best to fill his big shoes. So the ONTV Daily Weather Report is looking ahead as we take a look downtown. 29 degrees where you are currently sitting at. And today, nothing's changed here with a high of 31, a low of 17. Not a single percent chance at rain. You got to get out there and enjoy the weather. The next day, Wednesday, Canada Day. You guys are definitely going to want to know about that, which is a beautiful sunny 32 degrees Celsius is your high with a low of 17 degrees, bringing you into Thursday with maybe a little couple clouds coming in there to give you a little bit of shade. But that heat will still be at the forefront with a high of 30 and a low of 16. That is awesome. And 0% chance of rain. So I'm uh, For today. For today. So I'm going to be able to get my walk in. Yeah. Yes, that is awesome. All right, so we have to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Even though we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health support more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help.
and welcome back to Special Report. Thank you very much to KC Securities for sponsoring Special Report, both the morning edition and the afternoon edition as well. Now earlier we were talking about, in the morning show, we were talking about outbreaks, particularly on the Michigan side, and we talked about Detroit and uh, Lansing. Uh, where Michigan State University is as being two hot spots for that. And, and now you're going to say good news and it's not spreading anymore, correct? No, incorrect. Uh, there's a bar called Harper's. Uh, it's right near Michigan State University. There's now been over a hundred cases traced to that bar. Yeah, so June 8th, they reopened. Uh, the governor said they could. The bars were allowed to reopen. And then by June the 12th, they had uh, someone who tested positive for COVID-19. And over the last few days, they have now about 107 people, most between the ages of 19 and 23, were now positive for COVID-19. So guys, that's why you shouldn't be going out to bars, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's why we don't have ours open, because it's a very easy way to spread. That's me and you. I'm right yep. smack dab in the middle of that. Be better. Yes. Be better. Listen I know. I know you want to hang out with He's your friends. He's in that demographic. I'm I not. want to hang out with my friends. <laughs> Just a little bit longer, guys. A little Speaking bit longer. Speaking of hanging out, Canada Day. A uh, poll came out today. 42% Canadians say they will celebrate Canada Day the way they normally will. 16% say they're going to celebrate it, um, but with a smaller gathering. And 38% say they are less likely to mark the holiday at all this tomorrow so yeah i'm not really doing anything yeah. too special myself speaking of celebrating there's a guy yeah there's a guy <laughs> doing a absolute jig in yeah, julie he's, river he's dancing the jig right yeah now. thomas mitchell back in march march 14th to be exact he won one of the guaranteed one million dollar prizes from the olg 649 draw but with the case of it being so large and COVID going on he wasn't able to make it down to the toronto mm. offices to claim it but by appointment only, if you win one of those big prizes, you can go down now and finally got his hands on a million dollars. Imagine what? just waiting there with that suspense. I, I just wonder, like, how many million dollar prizes are they giving out that you need to make appointments for that? Is yeah. there normally is there normally a lineup for that? Uh, uh, can I do I just like, call? Do I just say like, like is that normally a lineup thing? Right. For the million dollar prizes? And we are talking a little bit about Canada yeah. celebration, so don't forget. On TV, we'll have some virtual fireworks to display yes, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So if mm -hmm. you're gonna if you're going to miss out a little bit on those fireworks and you're going to feel like you're not celebrating properly, we're going to do our best to make sure we can fill that part. At least do it digitally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and more local? I got a little bit more local. Sure, YMCA. Yeah, they yeah, are, yeah, YMCA. Yeah, they're going to extend their summer camps. And I know the first thing you're going to think of, that's dumb. I don't want my kid getting sick. Well, they're actually going through quite a lot of preventative measures. I believe right now the biggest social gathering you can have is 10. That is correct. So the, the group of campers will be eight and they will have two camp leaders every day checking temperatures, checking for symptoms every single day. And you can always find more information at ssmymca.ca. And uh, hopefully, maybe uh, this is going to be getting those kids out of the house so you can finally enjoy some of your summer. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. And uh, in some sadder news, um, Carl Reiner passed away earlier today. He was 98 years old. There's a picture of him up on the screen for you. He was one. Of, he created the Dick Van Dyke Show, uh, which some of you may remember. Uh, then he was also on Two and a Half Men. He was in uh, some of those Oceans movies as well. Uh, so uh, some sad news there for. And his son Rob Reiner is an actor director as well. You might recognize that name too. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the screen, uh, you're going to see Colette Linden. She is uh, was my co-host. Uh, she's presently in the hospital with uh, because she suffered some burns at her house. Thank you to everyone. We're over seven thousand dollars donated now. Please continue to help us out there. And for the rest of today, you can see Alex at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. on the newscast. Check my show out at 7 p.m. tonight, the Chris Oldcorn show. Um, tonight's very interesting as I go through the Palm Beach County City Council meeting where there's a bunch of people standing up arguing against masks with all kinds of crazy conspiracy theories, including Satanism and others. It's going to be a fun show. Watch that. See ya. Happy Canada Day. Happy See Canada Day, everyone.